The growth of plants is an ongoing process. Primary growth, which takes place due to the primary meristem, results in the lengthening of stems and roots. Another growth process begins after the period of primary growth and leads to the formation of the woody axis or an increase in the girth of the stem and roots. This is known as secondary growth. In the stem, secondary growth takes place due to the activity of secondary meristems such as the vascular cambium and cork cambium. The vascular cambium, located between the primary xylem and primary phloem of a vascular bundle, is also known as the intrafascicular cambium. When the stem is young, the vascular cambium is present as a patchy single layer. However, in the later stages, it develops into a complete ring, also known as the cambial ring. Let's understand how this ring is formed. When the secondary growth of a stem begins, a process of differentiation takes place in the cells of the medullary rays. These cells, located next to the intrafascicular cambium, become meristematic in nature and lead to the formation of the interfascicular cambium. Thus, the fusion of intrafascicular cambium and the interfascicular cambium results in the formation of a continuous ring of cambium or the cambial ring. At this stage, the cambial ring has primary xylem on its inner surface and primary phloem on its outer surface. Cell division takes place on both the sides of the cambial ring and results in the formation of secondary xylem on the inner surface and secondary phloem on the outer surface. Since the cambium is more active on the inner side, the formation of secondary xylem is more than secondary phloem. Due to the continued formation of secondary xylem, primary and secondary phloem get crushed. However, primary xylem remains intact in the center. The cambium also forms a narrow band of parenchyma at some places. This band passes through the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem in radial directions and is called secondary medullary rays. The secondary xylem tissues formed during cambial activity give rise to commercial wood. This cambium activity is impacted by several physiological and environmental factors such as defoliation, light, diseases, drought and temperature. During some seasons, the cambium divides actively, while during other seasons, its activity slows down. Consider the example of the temperate regions where climatic conditions are not uniform throughout the year. During spring, when the cambium is active, it produces a lot of xylary elements with vessels that have wider cavities. Wood formed during the season is called spring wood or early wood. On the other hand, during winter, the cambium is less active. Hence, it forms fewer xylary elements with narrow vessels. Wood formed during autumn is called autumn wood or late wood. Spring wood is lighter in color and has a lower density, whereas autumn wood is darker with a higher density. These two types of wood appear as two concentric circles on the trunk and together represent the annual ring. In the central layers of the stem of an old tree, 
the color of secondary xylem turns dark brown due to the deposition of organic compounds such as tannins, resins, gums and essential oils. These deposits make the wood hard and durable and resistant to microorganisms and insects. This region of the wood also consists of dead elements with highly lignified walls. It is called heartwood and provides mechanical support to the plant but does not conduct water. The peripheral region of the secondary xylem which is lighter in color and is involved in conduction of water and minerals is called sapwood. The cortex is another region where secondary growth takes place. Due to the vascular cambium's activity, the stem increases in girth. This results in rupturing of the cortical and epidermal layers. These layers need to be replaced with new protective cell layers. In due course, another meristematic tissue called cork cambium or ferrogen develops, usually in the cortex region. In the ferrogen, differentiation of cells begins on both sides. As a result, the cells of the inner surface differentiate into the secondary cortex or phalloderm, while the cells of the outer surface differentiate into cork or phalum. Tissue resulting from secondary growth in the cortex, namely cork, phalogen and phalloderm, are collectively called periderm. Tissues outside the vascular cambium, which includes the secondary phloem and periderm, are typically known as bark. Bark forms the outermost layer of the stem and roots of woody plants. Bark formed in the early season is called early or soft bark, while bark formed at the end of the season is called late or hard bark. Due to the formation of bark, gaseous exchange between the internal living cells and the outer atmosphere is cut off. To facilitate gaseous exchange, phalogen cuts off parenchymatous cells that break the epidermis and form lens-shaped openings on the stem called lenticels. Secondary growth in a dicot root is similar to that of a dicot stem. The vascular cambium develops from the pericycle tissue located just below the phloem bundles. Initially, the cambial ring is continuous and wavy, which later grows and becomes circular. Secondary growth of stems and roots occurs mainly in dicots 